All right, I think we are live, Ben. What's going on? I see some folks in here already. Um, we're gonna let going? a couple people join in. While we do, let's say hi. We we see JJ. What's up, Jeff? How's it going, buddy? We have Tony. Good old Tony. We've got Kevin. What's up, Kevin? Welcome. Thank you guys for joining up. Give a few more minutes to get some other folks joined in, and we will get started. Um, for those of you that have visited us here on our YouTube channel before, I thank you for coming back. Um, for those of you that are new to this, I'm Chris with Luxury Cigar Club, and my co-host on this side is Ben yeah, with Luxury so. Cigar Club, <laughs> and we appreciate you being here. Um, we're really excited. We have uh, JR and Lee, the co-owners of Stolen Throne Cigars. Who are responsible for this amazing cigar, the Crook, crook of the Crown? I think Ben's smoking the Toro, and I have the Robusto. Um, and so we're really excited to have them. We're going to have a few more folks join, and then I'll go over the deals. Matthew Yates, welcome! Thanks for joining. Um, okay, so as as folks join in, we have a couple deals going today. And um, you're right, I've I've seen a couple people say Stolen Throne only has one one blend and two sizes. The sizes are different. They're unique in flavor. I think I prefer the Toro slightly over the Robusto, but I'm smoking the Robusto today just to make sure. But we do have some really, I think this is probably the best kind of event sticks that we have, if you ask me, Ben. So what we're doing is we're buying, we're doing a five in one. So if you buy any five Stolen Throne cigars, you're gonna get one pre-release Habano cigar, which isn't set to release until 2021, um, which is awesome. We don't know even know the name of it. If you buy any 10 stolen throne cigars, it doesn't have a name yet. We'll verify that. Yeah, we'll have to ask. But if you buy any 10 stolen throne cigars, you're going to get three different sticks for free. The first one is going to be that same Habano pre release. The second one is going to be a Sumatra Call to Arms pre release, which should be releasing very soon. And the third is going to be one of Lee's personal reserve, the Remy Jean. So it's it's a different type of cut and light a lot of really unique sticks going again you guys can get these deals at luxurycigarclub.com we are only offering these deals while we're live with um lee and jr ben how hot is it on your patio it's not even 100 today so pretty nice you're a committed man you're a committed man um soon will be Let's see who else do we have join up. Adrian's here. What's going on, Adrian? Getting a couple more names that I notice in. Um, so I think I think we're probably good to start, Ben. What, how, you, you good with that? Yeah, I'm very good with that. Uh, let's uh, introduce Lee Marsh and Jr. All right. What's hey, up, Lee? guys? How are you? Hey, Chris. What's, What's going, on? going on? How you? How y'all doing? AJ, I don't good see to be. It's good. It's good to be here. Hey, Do you see I don't. It's just black. It's loading. Hey, Jr. We might ask you to disconnect and reconnect for us. All right. I think we lost them. Anyway, that's how I like it. Anyway, that's how I like it. Anyway, <laughs> the spotlight. All right, so welcome, Lee. Thank you so much for joining us. I know, well, you're probably one of the most interesting cigar brands uh, that we've seen for a while. And even though what Chris said at first uh, is true, that you're at this point a uh, one line company, uh, I, I feel like they're. You're, you're pro first thing you're probably the best one line company that that we've encountered here we go jr now we can see you i appreciate that all right how's that work? Oh, damn it he's back and, <laughs> and one of the most interesting uh, future Perfect. releases so when we heard of, of your your next coming release of course we wanted to be in it as soon as possible and try it etc and and of course, the the Remy Jean that's uh, an event only, right? So it's not like a limited. Yeah. It's it's basically just for events, just for a, a physical in person events. And we we feel very grateful that you will allow us to to hand those out to our cut and light uh, 
participants. And of course, say uh, the, the stick that you're releasing next year, do you have any more information about it? Does it have a name or is it still a secret? So the, the Habano doesn't have a name yet. Uh, we're kicking some things around. Uh, that's a really, really cool cigar. Um, so we work with Noel Rojas uh, at Florida San Luis in Nicaragua. Um, and he has some really good Samoto tobacco and, and, you, and that's really, really gonna shine in the Habano. It's uh, for all, everyone that doesn't know me, my inner circle knows that I'm a huge Habano guy, right? I, I needed a Habano cigar and everyone like lost it when we came out with a Maduro first, a Mexican San Andreas Maduro first. And the the truth is, is we just, we I couldn't get it right. Um, it had to be as close to perfect as possible. And we generally like the way that we blend is we generally like the tobaccos to do the talking. I try not to be myopic. Um, I let it kind of guide me like you know we were talking before the show started that we tried to make the crook a habano and it just didn't work it was terribly powerful and uh, wasn't uh, wasn't as decadent wasn't as enjoyable and and really at the heart of what we were doing you know you don't know what you don't know right we're coming up on a year on the market actually may 30th will be our launch date for our year anniversary and jr and i looked at each other as like man if if we don't sell these, we're smoking 10,000 of them, right? So we got to like this cigar. We had better be something that we're not going to get bored with and we're going to like and enjoy. Um, and thankfully that hasn't happened. Um, but to your point, Ben, when you said, you know, with us only having the one blend right now, there's a lot behind that, right? Like generally JR and I, I felt like we needed to do something, one thing really well before we try to do an abundance. And also if you think of it in terms of marketing it to retailers that, we want to sell our product. If you know, if I come to you as a new company you've never heard of, I, now I'm asking you to carry not one blend but multiple blends. Like it, it just made no sense. Um, it, it would make it harder for us to enter the market. It's a hell of an introduction to the market with a cigar that I think unanimously uh, is loved. You know, I haven't heard anyone that didn't like it. And I think as far as San Andreas goes. I know Chris keeps saying it all the time, but his favorite ever San Andreas cigar. Yeah, I mean, I was it just we were talking good. before the show a little bit, and and I was telling him that this really changed my mind about the Mexican San Andreas wrapper. Um, San Andreas though is off the chains, but I am a little bit biased. <laughs> well, we all have, we all have our biases, but this cigar really crosses that border between you know what San Andreas was and what it can be, and since I've seen this, I've heard of a few other age San Andreas projects come onto the market. So they're either copying you or you've done something really, really unique. And you're thinking like some of these other companies are, I'm not sure which one it is. We'll say they're copying you for now for the time being. Yeah. I mean, just so you know, we've had crooks for over two and a half, three years. So <laughs> there you go. I, I also forgot to mention guys, I'm sorry. I got ahead of myself. We will be giving away, some things to the best question from the audience. We have this really cool um, Stolen Throne Cook of the Crown ashtray, and we have these Stolen Throne sweaters. Um, we're going to pick two winners um, tonight. The first winner is going to get a sweater and an ashtray. The second really winner will sweater. Be... Keep one for me. No, the second <laughs> is a sweater. It's really cold. I want you to know so, that, pers that ashtray was personally made for me, and I gave it up for, for y'all to have for this event. Really? Oh, yes. dude. Well then, I'm gonna Come keep on, this. Man. Don't. Uh, oh, that's the one with the little, the little. Uh, yes. So, we. Well, uh, tell me, hold, hold on, quick question. Just something you just mentioned. So you've been out for a while, probably working your butts off, going door to door, trying to pedal, you know, your, eh, basically unknown and, and, and brand new brand and cigar so where do you feel your breakthrough was or when or how you you know it's really crazy right because you hear all these stories we have a lot of brand owners that are friends of ours and they tell us their origin stories and stuff and to be honest with you we didn't have that hard of a time right like we we were super super worried um and we still really can't believe it but we sold our first 10,000 cigars in three weeks. Um, it just, it, it blew up. I, I mean, we, 
we had some local support from guys that have known us for years because we've been around the industry for a long time, um, probably 15 years or so for me, um, and probably just as much for JR. And then, so we had shops here that were super supportive, and before we even got into it, they were like, yeah, we're in, let's do it. And then what happened was <clears throat> we've known the folks over at CFED since like 2014 or so, um, and once we got on there and then we hit with the Catman, I don't know if you guys read the Catman, he gave us a hundred out of a hundred and literally in that day, like the, it changed like period. Um, and then we were stocked out in three weeks. We sold 10,000 cigars in three weeks. Um, and then it's been a roller coaster ever since, man. Like it's, it's just been insane. Like, and a lot of it has been just social media, like a lot of what we really care about, you know, the cigar groups and cigar smokers, because that's what we are. We were boutique nerds, right? Like we wanted this and this and this. And it's those guys going into their retailers and being like, hey, man, why don't you have this? Like almost all of our growth has been organic in that manner. Like we haven't had to sell very hard. We haven't we've had orders open where they're like they don't even want samples. They're like, it'd be great if you send me samples, but I want your cigar because I've had five people ask for it just this week. Um, so it's, it's been amazing, man. Like we still can't, I still can't believe it to be honest. So, so talk to us a little bit. I mean, you, you mentioned it a little bit, but you know, where did you guys come from? How did you get into the industry? You know, talk, give us a little bit of the background. Yeah, JR. <clears throat> yeah. I'd love to tell you we were out there beating doors down and, um, people, we were real great, uh, salesmen, but just, that's just not the case. <laughs> People have been calling us up saying, you know, we heard about your cigar or our customers come in and uh, either send me a sample or no, I just want to place an order with you. It's been, we've been truly blessed. We have uh, great friends. We have a great community out there in social media that has really helped us out. Yeah, so we, we, my wife and I moved to Virginia. I'm originally from Baltimore. JR was born and raised here. Um, we moved here about six years ago and JR and I actually worked together and that's how we met. Um, and we just continued to gr create this bond. And then, uh, you know, you, we met all of our friends through cigars and, and the local cigar clubs and so local shops. And then we just kept talking and talking about it, like what we would do differently. We, cause we were boutique guys and we would see things that we didn't really care for. And we're like, well, you know, if I, if, if we were going to do this, I would do it a little differently in this. And to be honest with you, without JR, um, I'll never say it again publicly, but without him, we don't exist. Uh, <laughs> um, but he he really did, man. He lit the fire under my ass because, you know, at the end of the day, neither of us really had to take this risk. Um, we were both really successful in other avenues. Um, I had just had my first baby and I was getting my executive MBA. And then, uh, hell, let's just go ahead and start a cigar company. But he finally called me out. He goes, you know what? Let's stop talking about it. Let's be about it. And then the next week we were down in Nicaragua. Wow. Didn't take That's... that much talking, though. <laughs> yeah. Um, no, I mean, so tell us tell us about the name of the company. <laughs> and, you, know, it, it's a, you know, talking about doing it, though, that, that you were talking, I think, earlier about starting a, uh, a cigar shop or you get to, you get to smoke as many cigars you want. Well, one of the things that we had is, well, we're going to make 10,000 cigars, and if they don't sell, we're going to have to smoke 10,000 cigars. So it's a win-win, basically. That's Absolutely. Win -win. That's right. Absolutely. We wanted to be sure it's something that we really liked. I love it. Well, you would, nope. have, learned, you would have learned to love it either way. <laughs> So, so uh, tell when, us about the name Stolen Throne Cigars and and Crook of the Crown as well. So the Stolen Throne, like this is uh, this is a, a story that loves to be told. Everyone always asks me this because they love the the animosity behind it. Um, and I'll preface it by saying that the majority of the cigar industry are great people, right? They they super encouraging, super helpful. There are a few that uh, try to you know be contentious but that's you know that's their bag stolen throne to be honest with you was pure accident because that was the hardest part we were having with the whole 
process. It wasn't even, it wasn't purchasing tobaccos or finding the blends or figuring out how we wanted to do everything. It was really about how do you name the brand, right? Like how do you make it to where it's something that it's not hard to sell because you believe in it. Um, and we, we came up with a bunch of stuff and actually we had a name, but be, because of copyrights and, and trademarks and stuff, we, we had to pivot and do something else. Um, and JR and I were at a cigar dinner uh, quite a few years ago now. Um, and there was another company. It was a bunch of cigar reps and a few brand owners there. And there was a guy that, uh, you know, for lack of a better term, he was being uh, unfavorable to JR. Um, and the word had gotten out that we were trying to enter the industry. Um, and I had been drinking a little bit that night. Uh, and he had made, he made some comment, something like there's no room at the table or something like that. And there's, I said, there was, uh, there was no seat at the table for you. Yeah, there was no seat at the table. Um, so I used an expletive and said, well, we'll steal one. And so all these years later, we're sitting here at JR's back patio, having a few bourbons and smoking the cigar and talking about it and he goes, Hey, you remember when you told that guy to go shove it? what do we call it stolen why don't we call it stolen throne cigars we'll steal our seat at the table right and i was like man that's pretty damn good and then the, after that the crook of the crown just rolled right off it because i'm from baltimore um and and jr and i are raven season ticket holders so we the raven came into play and it was the rest was history but the hardest damn part was naming the damn company <laughs> so interesting story about the raven interesting story so our, our logo of course is is two stags right because yeah. um our third partner david and i started the company and then we brought ben on really quickly and and um david's family crest and my family crest both have a stag in it oh, and nice. one day ben sends a message to our our group chat and it's got a, a black raven sitting on one of the one of the the stags heads and he's like now i'm part of the team so maybe, maybe, we to, maybe we have to add that in. There you uh, go. There you I go. Like and I like the name too. So let's take that name, Crook of the Crown. <laughs> Crook of the Crown. Okay. We'll just hey, that's take trademark it. though. It is. <laughs> we do accept royalties in cigars though. We Cigar still smoke royalties? Up. Yeah. And to be honest <laughs> with you, with the quarantine, I'm depleting my stash at an exponentially high rate. So if we could work that out, that'd be great. Fine. You have 10, <laughs> uh, they're long gone, Bubba. <laughs> it's such a beautiful, such a beautiful ash. It's a, it's a, it's a really well done cigar. I mean, I, I remember when I first, I don't know where I got it first. Somewhere I got it. It came across my desk. I think you had one too, and I smoked it. And I was like, I called Ben. I'm like, Ben, smoke this cigar. And he's like, Okay, okay. I'm like, No, 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 no. Smoke this cigar, man. And like we were in love at that moment, you know. I I didn't research your company. I didn't research the brand. I'm like, this cigar is good. That's all that I. That's all I care about. And then when I found out it was the only one, I was like, the original oh my artwork God. for the stolen throne also involved uh, whiskey. <laughs> There's a theme here. <laughs> so I uh, it is, I did some very. very minor artwork or in high school so i sat down and um, did some artwork to draw up the duncan the man carrying the throne and the throne and we used that for our original artwork for stolen throne i think the craziest part about that whole story is that they had high school all the way back then <laughs> it wasn't called high school <laughs> you know, I, I, I wasn't gonna. I wasn't gonna say anything. And but then again, again, I did the uh, artwork for the Crook of the Crown. But after that, Lee fired me on doing artwork, and we have someone else who does art now. Well, <laughs> you know, do what you're good at is what I say. But um, I, I wasn't gonna say anything. But I've always said that the cigar on this show that the cigar is like the great equalizer, right, Ben? And. Um, I wasn't going to comment, but Jr. and Lee, there seemed to be a few years between I you guys. The, uh, <laughs> guy, <laughs> guy, guy, guy that I worked with showed the cigar to um, Robert Caldwell, and he looked at it and he goes, "Oh, that looks familiar." 
<laughs> but I'm friends with Robert. He, he's he's a great guy. He was just joking around. Good, good guy. Yeah, there you you, you're, you're right, Chris. There's a uh, a lot a lot of years between Jr. and I. Um, but you know, the you're right. The cigar is a great equalizer, man. It brings people together for sure. Um, I tease the hell out of him. <laughs> I tease the <laughs> shit out of that old man. But he, dude, I tell you, like he. He doesn't get enough credit, and that's why I really like doing these things uh, because he really is the fire underneath the the company, right? Like I'm I'm out there doing a lot of stuff, but we're not even here if he's not giving me a hard time. I mean, don't get me wrong; he's the biggest headache I have in this company, but he, <laughs> he he's he's awesome. He's awesome. I am I am recording this. <laughs> it's on the internet now. It's on YouTube. So this is it. There we go. I'm sure. I'm sure Ben would say something. Uh, we had a couple more folks join. What's up, Chris? How's it going? Larry, Robert, G, welcome, welcome. Thanks for joining us. Um, again, we're with Stolen Throne Cigars. We got a couple deals going. I will put those below the screen. Um, yeah, no, love, love the cigar. Love the cigar. We actually we smoked this just what three weeks ago uh, on our YouTube channel. Also, Ben, when we had Remarkable Liz and Schmokini, I think we both picked one of these to smoke. So you told them about our limited release. It's coming, Jared. Give them time. Give them time. All Holy right. smokes. It's coming. It's coming. <laughs> so before we get there, I want to talk about talk to me about the exact blend on the crook of the crown. Forget I said that. Can you can you edit that out? <laughs> Hold on. <laughs> can you That's edit it. that it's out of the it. live broadcast? <laughs> uh, so the crook um, is uh, Mexican San Andreas. Uh, Maduro, of course, over Indonesian binder, and it's all Nicaraguan fillers. Um, and a, a good portion of those fillers comes from Samoto, is what we were talking about, um, which has become a staple for Noel and um, Carlos Pereira at uh, Florida San Luis. Um, so it's completely unique in that regard. There's a great espresso flavor to it, which kills for me every time. I, I heard you say you prefer the Toro, and generally, um, they, they are distinctively different. We did that on purpose. Um, Toros are more sweeter because you're, you're getting more of that ratio of wrapper. Um, but the, the Robuso for me, you get right into that spice and the espresso. And generally I smoke more Robusos cause that's what we have open to give away at events and stuff. But, uh, yeah, I mean, it's, a uh, it's, it's a beautiful cigar, man. Like it's one of those cigars where being a boutique guy where you smoke a ton of different things, if I had to smoke one cigar every day, all day, I could do it with the crook and mounted board. And that was really the end goal because it breaks all the cigar industry, man. It, it, if you're a traditional business person, it, it'll bend your brain because it breaks all the rules of traditional business. Like rule number one, you're not the customer, but if we don't love the cigar and we're not passionate about it, how the hell can we get you to buy it? Like, how can I expect you just, to throw your hard-earned money after it, you know what I mean? Absolutely. So no, absolutely. Let me, let me ask for people for people who haven't smoked it yet. Uh, what would you compare it to? What kind of uh, what other cigars do you really really love that you would say? Okay, if you like this thing and this, this is these are the things I really like. And if somebody there is like, oh, I love all these things as well, he, they will know that you know it, this this is similar or something. I think it's more of a profile thing because I think the one thing that we hang our hat on with the crook is I think you're going to be hard pressed to compare it to another cigar. Um, whether you like it or hate it, it's going to be a unique experience. I think if you're if you're heavy into the the medium plus full body flavor uh, and you like the profiles of spice and sweetness and the espresso, it's it's definitely going to be in your alley. Um, I don't know that I would compare it to another cigar, though. Like, I don't know that I would say, when I smoke this, I think of this. Well, my, my question is a little different, though. It is, what do you love to smoke? Because obviously you love to smoke this. That's why you chose it. But what other cigars are like, oh, I love this, I love this, I love this. I know this is totally different, but, you know, it's part of your uh, rotation, Repertoire, let's say, right? or, yeah. yeah. I, dude, I smoke a ton of stuff. Um, I smoke a lot of Tatawahe. Um, I smoke Roma Craft. I smoke Dumbarton. You guys had Sock on. Um, 
yeah hey i i smoke we smoke pretty much everything to be honest with you yeah um, really. and i think if if you're in if you're in that ballpark of you like the the dexterity and the depth of nicaraguan tobacco i feel like the crook's gonna be right in your wheelhouse okay look it came in a luxury cigar club box first of all ben so it's it's one of the best cigars <laughs> right just because of that but um so we yeah i mean me too same thing just gorgeous gorgeous ash razor razor burn line everything's perfect on it every one burns like this too you know we, we smoke several before we send one and if it's if it's a problem we don't send it and you're you guys delivered on this stick so we're, we're doing a we're doing a deal you buy 10 sticks you're going to get three free sticks direct from you guys one of them's the habano pre-release one of them's the Sumatra called the Arms pre-release, and one of them is your personal reserve Lee, which is the Remy Jean. Correct. First, tell everybody who's the first to have access to these cigars. Uh, you guys will be probably outside of our inner circle. You'll probably be one of the only people to ever smoke the Habano. Um, I don't, Jr. I don't think anyone's ever had that. Right? We 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 very rarely have given that out because. We've been, I've been smoking them all. <laughs> um, the Sumatra is really cool, man. So one of the hardest things that JR and I had to do was find something that would be on the level of the crook, but then not be compared because anything we do at this point is going to pale in comparison to the crook, even in our own minds. Like no matter what happens, the crook's always going to be our baby because it got us here, right? Like it smash all our goals everything we got we put so much into it um so the sumatra is fantastic man especially the vitolas that we chose to do um we were doing a classic cuban corona which is a six by 46 that's what you guys would receive um man it's just so creamy spicy like it's it's nothing like the crook and i'm in, in the best way possible um so, and then, of course, we got our limited edition first coming. This is JR's baby. Uh, you know, so I get a lot of praise. I get a lot of, you know, for the blending and putting stuff together. So I wanted to give JR that opportunity to kind of put himself out there and do his little project. So him and Noel crafted this um, this Connecticut that's going to come in a petite Remy size, which is a petite Bellicoso. Um, and it's, it's awesome, man. It's awesome. We're hoping to have that done by the end of the summer. Um, because the same thing, man, we were talking about how you, you, you have certain preconceived notions about certain rappers and stuff. We're not huge Connecticut guys, neither JR or I. So, uh, what we wanted to do was kind of change that mold. Wouldn't it be cool if we had one we could smoke and we really enjoyed it. And so that's the, basically the approach that JR took with Noel and he, he killed it. He killed it there. We don't even have any more bench rolls because, We've smoked them all. We've got more coming, but they're not gonna they're not gonna make it either, probably. And then the the your personal reserve, the Remy Jean. Tell us about that. So the Remy uh, I had a hard time ever really releasing it in any capacity because it was it, it's so personal to me. It was I did it as something to share with friends and family, uh, with the birth of our my wife and my child, Remy. Um, and actually, Noel Rojas hand rolls every single Remy. So that's also another limitation to mass producing. He's already pissed at me at how many I get him to make. <laughs> um, but if we went into production or any kind of exuberant amount, we would lose that. And I think that that's, that's a real intricate part because that was kind of his gift to me. We worked on that together. And I actually started it. I created the base. And he was like, hey, do you trust me? I was like, yeah, of course. And he's like, okay, well, let me finish it. I want to surprise you. And he killed it. I love this cigar. Um, the cool thing about the Remy is it's a Habano. Um, it's a Bellicoso. But it has, like, a, a great sweetness to it. But the problem is it's a huge powerhouse. So we, we've often, what we have generally have done in the past when we're on road trips and we're meeting with shop owners and stuff, we always give them some crooks and a Remy to smoke with us while we're there. And, Everyone always thinks that I'm taking the piss out of them when I say, well, did you eat today? And they're always like, oh, who's this kid? Like, you know what? I said, no, nah, man, I'm, I've done my duty. If you say no, you're good. Do your thing. But every single one of them will smoke and be like, I should have listened. I should have smoked. I should have eaten today. 
They are they are powerful for sure. Yeah, yeah, they are. And you, what happens is you chase that sweetness. So you just you go after it and go after it. Um, that's right. I did send you one, Ben, didn't I? Wow. <laughs> I was about to go buy a ten pack on our on our own damn website to smoke one. We'll, you have to we'll send, figure it out. You have to send me guy, one. Chris. Okay, yeah, good. So, guys, um, soon we're going to open it up for uh, whoever's live watching to ans- ask questions. Um, remember, guys, we're giving away this ashtray, which is actually Jr.'s personal ashtray. We just found out. Thank you, Jr., for donating that to the cause. One of these really awesome Stolen Throne sweatshirts to the first place winner of the question contest. The second place winner of the question contest is going to get a Stolen Throne sweatshirt. Make sure to get your questions in the chat. Um, all those cigars that Lee just talked about are going to come with a 10, 10 stick bundle. So if you want to try this new stuff that no one else has access to, make sure to buy at least 10 sticks. I would just buy a bundle if I were you because it's that good. You'll go through it that fast. Um, I agree. <laughs> but um, I'm going to ask one of the questions that the audience usually asks, so they have to be a little more creative today. Ben Ben touched on it a little bit, but if you had to pick a cigar to smoke and it couldn't be one of yours, hmm. and it's the only cigar you can smoke for the rest of your life, what stick would it be? Can it be any cigar? Does it have to still be in production today? any cigar it just can't be one of yours i would probably smoke oh that's hard man that's a good question but i will probably smoke the old camacho corojos before they sold the davidoff and the aroa family had it i love those cigars man if you if you follow if we're friends on facebook or you follow me you'll see me post all of them i'm sitting on a huge stash and slowly trying to to you know, ration them out, but it's not going well with the quarantine. But I love those old Corojos, man. What about you, Jr.? I'm gonna leave for a minute. I'm, I can't hear Chris. Uh oh. Okay. Can you hear me? Yes. Okay. So same question to you. Just uh, what cigar? If you could only smoke one cigar for the rest of your life, that's not yours. Uh, any cigar, I guess, uh, present or past. What would it be? Cinco peso. I knew he was going to say that. <laughs> so a cinco peso was a shop exclusive that Noel did for uh, a shop in Texas called the Underground. Um, and Jr. loves those things. He smoked all of his, and they smoked all of mine because that's how he is. <laughs> I just I think that's love that cigar. I tell you what, I smoked my last one about six months ago. Wow. Or, or I smoked Lee's last one about six months ago. <laughs> now you have to start uh, start treasure hunting. <laughs> okay. uh, we got a couple of questions. People are asking how to order. If you want to order, guys, you need to go to LuxuryCigarClub.com. Wait, I have a handy-dandy little notebook here, banner. LuxuryCigarClub.com. <laughs> and all you need to search for is Stolen Throne. It's actually on our homepage because it's one of yeah, our. I'm glad fat- to come back in. Okay, Jr. I can't sounds read good. His lips. <laughs> Just uh, all you need to do is go to luxurycigarclub.com and Stone Throne Crook of the Crown is on the homepage. So go go buy go buy twenty or forty or eighty or a hundred, whatever you want, and we'll make sure to take care of you. Uh, Lee said okay. if if you, if you buy a hundred, he's going to send you some of his Camachos that he's hoarding as well. <laughs> uh, I'll but, send you whatever you want, man. You buy a hundred, I'll send you whatever you want. <laughs> But um, <laughs> that reminds me, Ben, will you make sure that they are totally available on the site while we get JR back in here, please? Sure. Yeah. All right, JR, can you can you hear me now? Uh-oh, technical difficulties. I'm not sure if you can hear me or not. So we have some questions starting to roll in, Lee, and maybe Ben's going to have to do them soon. Kevin, if you have a question, just put it in the chat. Um, Let's see the and and Rojas makes all the sticks, right? That that you guys are are sending, right? Yeah. So he he oversees all of our production um, at Florida San Luis. Okay. So the first question comes from Kevin. How many tobacco factories have you guys visited down in Nicaragua before choosing the right one? Ah, that's a good question. Um, we've been to quite a few. 
uh, I would say at least five or six, because um, really it comes down to the community. We 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 met Noel through actually through Island Jim and Dan Sawali, and you know uh, a shop owner in Baltimore introduced me to Island Jim, and then that's how you kind of whittled down to like the seven degrees of Kevin Bacon kind of thing. Um, and that's how we met Noel. And I met, we flew to Texas to meet with him. And then that's, he, he directed us to the factory we use today. So, but we did, we've seen a ton, man, because a, a big part of it was learning and education, right? We didn't want to just throw money at it, put some, put a band on something that we didn't create. We, if we were going to fail, we wanted it to be because of our stuff, because of our choices. And so you, it's harder than you think to find people that are going to let you control all the, the entire process. And, and I was adamant about that. Like we weren't going to do it unless we could make every decision from tobacco to packaging to everything. Um, and the well has been awesome because he's educated us on all the mistakes that he's made on things we should do differently, this, that, and the other thing. Um, and it's really about fit and, and creativity. But, you know, we've been to the Perdomo factory. We we spent a, a ton of time with Nick. Um, we've been all over the place. We've been to the Dominican. Um, yeah, because, you know, the thing is, is everyone sees the last year of success for us. But really, we put five years into getting to where we are between regulations, between who we wanted to work with and how we wanted to do it. It, it, it. There was a lot. There was a lot that went into it. But we, we visited a ton. Probably five to ten is probably a, a conservative amount of factories. JR, can you hear me now? Now I can, yeah. Oh, hey. yes. Technology. Let's see. Larry says, uh, Larry says, go Ravens. That's right. Larry's a smart guy. He wins. Yeah. Chris, he wins. <laughs> Larry wins not, all of the swag. That was a, that was a, a great question. question. <laughs> Uh, G sounds, Banker. That sounds like four of the best questions we've heard. <laughs> G Banker asks, what, what got you guys into cigars? So uh, each of you, Lee and then JR, what got you guys into cigars? So for me, it was, uh, it was the camaraderie, right? You know, so I traveled a lot for work, so I would spend a lot of my time in cigar shops meeting people. And that's generally how I met everyone in the industry that I know today. Um, but on a very finer note, we all have those memories of like an uncle or a friend that just shared a cigar and you talk. And, and for those moments in those times, like you're nothing else really matters. You're just kind of bullshitting with your friend, hanging out, like doing your thing. Um, and that's what brought JR and I together. And that's how we met all of our close friends, like everyone that works with Stolen Thrones. We met them through cigars, and then they just, you know, believed in what we were doing and carrying forward. But really, it is like whenever, whenever you move, I've I've lived all over the world, and whenever you move somewhere, the easiest way to meet someone and, and find a friend is going to a cigar shop. Period. Like I mean, and it kind of draws you in. Like generally, besides like my high my college teammates and stuff from football like i don't i i don't think i really talk to someone as much as i talk to my cigar friends what about you jr what got you into cigars my brother-in-law he's a police officer and we used to stay out and smoke cigars and drink beer then uh he was involved in a shooting and for anyone that thinks that a police officer that shoots someone and it doesn't bother them, they're totally incorrect because he was involved in the shooting and I was there with him day in and day out because it bothered him so much. We were there smoking cigars and drinking beer constantly. And from there, I just got more involved into it and joined Cigar Club and I got hooked up with Lee and we got talking about cigars about, well, geez, uh, we ought to start our own. We ought to start our own company because we do this or we do that or we do this differently. We do that differently. No, I love it. the The start for you guys is similar to the start for us, actually. So that's uh, it's nice to hear. I think that's how a lot of cigar companies get started, though. Honestly, uh, Larry, a Baltimore guy here, 
Where's your favorite place to go in Baltimore area to smoke a cigar? Do you have a particular shop you go to to get your cigars? Oh, yeah. Absolutely. Dan Cigar Lounge in Baltimore. Uh, Dan Sawali, we talked about him a little bit earlier. He's, um, he, I got a colorful story for you guys. I won't, I won't do it on the live broadcast, but uh, how we met Island Jim because of Dan. Dan's a great guy. I've, I've known Dan for years. I actually I grew up in that shop. That was one of the first shops I started going to. He's five minutes away from my childhood home, um, right there on Pulaski Highway. Um, Love what that a great, guy. What a great guy, man. Like, he's he's a funny dude. Um, but, yeah, that's where we go. We have a ton of support. You know, we have plenty of shops up and down the East Coast. Um, but that, that has always been our home shop. Like every time we go home for a Ravens game, before we even were selling crooks, we would always go to Dan's. Um, and we, we've been honored to be a part of his anniversary event, which is a huge party every year. This year will be 20 years, which is awesome. We're, we're looking forward to doing that with him. Um, but, yeah, we always go to Dan's. And if you do me a favor, Larry, don't tell him we sent you because I'll probably kick you out. But uh, <laughs> enjoy. <laughs> uh, we're going to do a herf with our Luxury Cigar Club members after this live broadcast. We'd love for you guys to join that. And you can tell us your colorful story. Absolutely. Okay, perfect. Absolutely. Um, let's see. Kevin has another question here. What inspired you to use? I don't think it's wax paper, but it is like um, construction paper. He's talking about the packaging. Like what inspired you to use the paper instead of other materials like other brands? So like a traditional box or something, you know, it's got this really so, cool wax feel on it. Because we wanted to be different, but there's actually, the band. he's talking about the band. Yeah. Oh, I don't know. Are you talking, to, Kevin? Are you talking about the band or the or the? Answer both. Answer both. So they're they're kind of one and the same. Uh, we worked with Sancho at Cigar Rings, which is one of the best in the business, right? In terms of developing the bands. Absolutely. And really, what we were doing with how we packaging, it's all about the the maintenance of the cigar over time. Um, if you notice, our our wrappers are super oily. Um, and the reason we do them the way we do is we, we didn't want to prevent that. We, we didn't want yellow silos soaking out all those beautiful oils that gives you the sweetness and, and, the, and the dexterity of that wrapper. So by doing what we've done, the, the, the band can take the oils of the, of the cigar, whereas other materials might not do it so well. Um, and, and the paper in itself keeps them marinating, right, instead of, it protects them. It's moisture resistant, so it allows the humidity in, but it keeps all the oils within the cigars. Great. So we've been doing it wrong, Chris. Next round. Yeah, well, we, we, at least we use cigar rings for our bands, too, right? So yeah. we, we, we did that much, right? We just messed everything else up. <laughs> no, no, man. Look, it's different strokes for different folks, right? We just had a, sp a particular way we wanted to do things and maintain the cigar um, because, you know, we put so much into it and we wanted to be different. And the way that we we bundle it, it's it makes more sense for retailers in terms of our, our model, um, which allows them to make more money, which allows them to push our product more. So there's a lot of thought into that, um, how we do things. And plus, I think it looks really cool. I like it. <laughs> so. It does look really cool. I'm actually, I keep admiring my little setup here. You know, I always try to set something up here with every uh, every event we do. And I keep I keep looking. I'm like, I like this. This looks good. This is unique. Let's see. What else? Tony Tony is a luxury cigar club uh, resident here. And he asks, what do you think is the most important thing you've learned to not do as a new cigar company? So that's a really good question. Well, that is a great they, question. They didn't fit. They, they started... Uh, amazingly so there was no a uh, learning curve as much as maybe other companies do uh, there, so we they, there's definitely lessons learned but <laughs> for sure oh absolutely um, it's a it's a completely different model right like everything um, because you know like I said I'm an MBA right so we tried to plan everything JR was a supply chain executive so we tried to plan this all out right and try to Oh, we're going to do this and we're going to maintain this. And then wait till your first shipment gets lost. <laughs> and then you're like, okay, I have 40 bundles of cigars somewhere. I have no idea where they're at. Uh, okay. Like what do we do? So it's definitely to be flexible. It's definitely, and, and 
this other part really hasn't been an issue for us because it's kind of one of the staples of our 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 company is we do what we say we're going to do. We're men of our word. We're transparent. We're honest. Um, you know, like one of the biggest things when we changed the priming on the crook because we weren't getting the consistency and plus we were getting some issues with, you know, fragile wrappers and that kind of stuff. We, we were honest about it. We're honest about everything because we are a boutique company. We try to be transparent and we think that's part of the experience. So when you see us as cigar guys smoking other stuff, we don't have to pretend like we just smoke soul and throne stuff. We love all cigars. We're, we're cigar nerds and we love the, the community and the industry. And I think that that's been a huge part of what you were saying, Chris, is, you know, like we don't try to hide from questions. We don't try to pretend we're something we're not. Um, this is who we are. And we try to share that and then being genuine. So it's become really, it, that's the easy part, to be honest with you. But definitely lessons learned is the flexibility and realizing that you're working with, we're managing operations in a country that we're thousands of miles away from. And there's so much that you can't control personally once that's underway. Um, and that's extremely difficult for me. Uh, and I think that's where JR is a great balance. He talks me off the ledge probably two or three times a week. Uh, <laughs> um, but yeah, we're always learning, man. That's a great question. We're always learning. Yeah, I'm, I'm retired. Uh, I went to work for a cigar shop for a few years so I could learn that side of the business. Um, that That's helped us out a little bit. Awesome. No, I, I mean, I mean, we see it too, right? We... We're the, we're the third layer of the supply chain. You know, you guys have to get it to you. We get it from you, and we have to get it to all of our people. And right. uh, I, I try to jump off some ledges from time to time, and, and Ben's always there, like, holding my hand almost. Like, just, I'm sure I bother him. He doesn't, huh? I'm trying to push him, but he's holding on to that ledge really, really hard. <laughs> <laughs> But uh, well, thank you. I won't call you anymore. I'm gonna call. I'm gonna call Lee and Jr. when I'm about to jump off the ledge from now on. That way, I have some. I'll jump holding. with you, Chris. Don't worry. There about we go. <laughs> we'll go together. <laughs> we'll go together. Um, this one comes from Marius, another Luxury Cigar Club member. From your cigar selection, which one is more medium body to creamy? So, we 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 you only have one line, but there is a really distinct difference between the the Toro and the Robusto size, and I'll answer it, and then you tell me if I'm right or wrong, right? Because I've actually smoked a lot of cigars, not 10,000 like you guys have. But um, I, I believe the Toro is the creamier, sweetier representation. Sweetier? Sweetier? Sweetier. <laughs> sure for your word. No. <laughs> That's a luxury cigar club trademark word now, sweetier. Sweetier? <laughs> I'll, I'll make a t-shirt. I'll put a sticker out, sweetier. Nice. But, um. But the Toro, right? I mean, it, it is that, that filler wrapper ratio. And it is. And this this one's a little more peppier. Pep, geez, I can't talk. Pepperier. <laughs> and you're gonna have to you're gonna have to take over because I'm gonna go jump off of something uh, now. I'm a foreigner. <laughs> English is my second language. Everything you say sounds uh, gooder to me than <laughs> No, I think I think you I think you nailed it. Between sweetier and pepperer. Pepper, Peppy. 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 No, yeah. and we 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 get that a lot, uh, and we also get the question about why we use the unfinished foot, and the that's the prime example is we put so much into the selection of the tobaccos that we love that wrapper so much we want you to get that first spike of just pure wrapper flavor, and especially with the Toro that's where you get a ton of that sweetness. And and even with the rebuso, the rebuso you you'll you'll hit it, you'll get sweet, and then boom, right into the power, right into the espresso, right into the spice. But I think I think you nailed it, even though it's sweetier. The other thing you'll learn from the closed foot by not having CeeLo on it, no matter what humidor you go into, as long as it's not overly not kept, the fluctuation in the humidity in it, you'll see some cigars with the humidity going up and down, some of the cigars you'll see that if they're not in CeeLo, the end of them will crack. Ours won't crack because it has that closed foot. 
Yeah, I love I love the closed foot. There, there's a brand which I won't mention that has a closed foot on every single one of their cigars, and um, it, it's miserable to smoke through. I hate it. I actually peel it off of this brand, and I won't say what brand it is, but um, but but I do want to make a distinction. This is not a true closed foot. This is just an unfinished foot. Correct. 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 Okay. Yeah. So the difference you get between just a little bit. Yeah, you get you get a little bit of the the cigar, the foot of the cigar there, but it, it is unfinished. It burns wonderfully, and that that sweetness is definitely there. Ben, how's that Toro? Is that what you spoked last week, Ben? That size? No, I, smoked, I smoked the robusto last week. last week. Okay, so we changed. Okay, perfect. That's a that's I'd a good question. I'd encourage you when you light them to to light it. Don't light it away from you light it when in your mouth when you're starting to puff on it so you can get a taste of that wrapper okay okay that's there probably one of the best experiences of the crook that you know I, we we i never try to lecture someone how someone enjoys a cigar because that's part of their experience and everything's subjective even to what you like or don't like in a cigar just because i like a cigar and you don't doesn't make one of us right or wrong um, but that is like Jr. hit a very good point about one of the coolest things about the crook is when you you first toast that foot, you know, in your mouth, you, you get the sweetness, you get that whole effect. So we have another question from our private members lounge from Tony. I haven't tried my stolen throne from the luxury cigar club box yet. Well, get on that. Um, what's, <laughs> what's, what's a good pairing to enjoy it with? Uh, everything. <laughs> no, I, I think, uh, you know, we're big bourbon guys. Uh, we, we did a barrel pick with New Rift Distillery um, last September. That's usually the go-to. Um, I'm a big bourbon guy, so we do bourbons or rye with it. Um, but generally anything. What, what you'll really get from our tobacco is that, if you notice, it doesn't dry your mouth out. And that's really important. Um, so you, you shouldn't need to drink with a, a cigar. That's one of the biggest misconceptions because you're, you're killing the flavor. Now, you can always use a drink and pairing to enhance the, you know, your profile and, and your enjoyment, obviously. Um, but pretty much anything, to be honest with you. I haven't really found something, I'm biased, that doesn't really pair well. But I like a nice bourbon or a rye with it. I like, uh, I also like scotch and Irish whiskey. Okay. Uh, I like mine with coffee, but that's my kind of typical answer every every time someone asks. Uh, yeah, it is like, nice with a nice cold brew, Chris. Uh, I do like it, it with a cold brew. It's really good with Cuban coffee in the morning. <laughs> uh, uh, Cuban coffee. I'm getting started. I got a ton of stories. I can't wait for the surf. I got a ton of stories. About <laughs> that old man, that old man and, and Cuban coffee. Uh, another question from... Uh, Marius, being a boutique brand, what uh, what you have with big brands? I'm not sure. Uh, I'm going to get more clarification on that question. We'll move on to the next one. This is a good one from G Banker. What about your company's future? Are you most excited about just the just the growth opportunities? I mean, we've put so much into it. You know, we we have a ton of you know following already just with the crook. We have so much cooler things uh, planned with the expansion of our regular production line and um, our launches of some limited edition stuff. Um, so we are true boutique when, and when I say that people are always like shock and all, like, what do you really mean? But like our limiteds, when they're gone, they're gone. We're not going to be one of those guys where it sold out really fast. It was really popular. We're going to bring it back. No, we're not doing that. Like we're doing because the whole reason behind for us for limiteds is we have some really cool tobaccos that we don't aren't as plentiful that we couldn't do thousands and thousands of scars, but it allows us to be super creative um, and and do some really off the wall things. Uh, and I'm super excited to share those with people um, because with the crook, it was like our introduction. You don't really know how your blending style, your tobacco choices are going to be experienced. And now that we have people that enjoy what we're trying to do, enjoy the robust amount of flavor we provide. It'll, it, it kind of amps you up, gives you that confidence to be bold with your choices and kind of push through with, with your directive of the, the future blends and all that kind of stuff. Gotcha. Gotcha. Uh, question for JR from Josh. Uh, why do they call you the goat? <laughs> 
look at him. Because I'm the greatest <laughs> of all times. Something tells me there's more to that story. <laughs> no way, man. You can't see it. You can't see it because it's dark, but that dude looks like a billy goat. <laughs> he's got the whole gruff and everything. I I'm trying it. to see how long I can grow my goatee. Turner, <laughs> me too. This is as long as mine grows. <laughs> I'm going to work on that. At the mine only grows on my face. You know, at the, yeah. I don't at the have expense of my wife. Up. I'm with you, Chris. I'm uh, <laughs> at 31. I'm 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 bolding very quickly. <laughs> yeah, no, yeah. I'm 32 and right ahead of you, probably. Um, Kevin, Kevin, with uh, one of our favorite questions: Will we ever see a luxury cigar club exclusive? Maybe the Stags Crown. Maybe. Maybe. I mean, yeah. You know, uh, we're always open to doing creative things and and partnering with people for sure. Um, Especially with the exclusives, it, it kind of falls in line for the limiteds for us because we have access to some, some pretty cool stuff that we can't use on a grandiose scale. Um, but I think you might be onto something, Kevin. All right, let's yeah, that's Kevin, a, Kevin, whoever you are. That's a, Kevin's that's a, you know. uh, let's see. Chris, Chris is actually local here to our warehouse. What's the best pair of liquor for your cigar? So I think I think the question is more like, what's your favorite? Like yours, like Lee personally and Jr. personally, like a bottle, your favorite bottle with the crook of the crown. Uh, I'm looking at my bar as you're asking me that question. Um, probably Weller. I'm a big Weller guy. Um, so Weller Special Reserve. I like to pair really well with uh, Stone Throne Cross Crown. I, I do really like our new riff, but you can't get it because it's only our barrel. Um, but definitely Weller for me, I would say. Okay. I'd say ben Riach, ben Riach Scotch. Ben Riach. Okay, there we go. Either that or anything I can get at anyone else's house. <laughs> <laughs> that is true. That is true. You guys are going to fit right in in the herf. I'll tell you that much right now. It's got, um, got some sticky fingers, boys. Okay, Mario. Uh, go ahead, Ben. No, I'm go saying ahead. we're under quarantine. We heard that JR is being confined to the warehouse, so he can't, he can't put his paws on anything. <laughs> That's right. Don't touch stuff, JR. Damn yeah, it. Everybody has more liquor all of a sudden. Yeah, JR's right. at home. Uh, right. So Mario <laughs> clarified his question. He says, being boutique brand, what issues and struggles you have during the road to success? Versus that's a that's a, that's a really good question. Uh, so it, it's very much relationship driven, right? So you you spend a lot of time proving that you're worth it, and you're not just some guy trying to throw money at a cigar. Um, and really, you know, there's a lot of smoke and mirrors. You and everything you heard is true. There are lies and innuendos with this industry. But one of the big things that isn't true, that, I mean, I'm sorry, that is true, is tobacco availability, man. It is so hard to get quality tobacco on a regular basis. Um, and so those relationships are super, super difficult to establish. And luckily, we've had Noel that's kind of paved that way and vouched for us. I'm sure he regrets it to today. But um, he, he, without him, we wouldn't have been able to capture a, a lot of the tobaccos that we use. Um, and, and that that's a really good question because it is developing the relationships like with Sancho and Cigar Rings and, and, and meeting the right retailers and the right strategic partners. It's all relationship driven. All. Absolutely. And what complicates what we do a little bit more is that we don't just look for to quality tobacco. We look for quality aged tobacco because all of the tobacco we use in our cigars is aged tobacco. How many years? So the crook, the crook, nothing is younger than three years in the crook. And as well, the is ten years, right? Yes. So the the wrapper is ten years, but eventually we'll run out of that that wrapper. But we've created a partner that will process it to the extent that we want it to. And we've already started aging that. So we have plenty to get us through the foreseeable future, but eventually that will run out. But we'll still be able to produce the, the crook at the same quality. Perfect. 
Okay, let me ask you a question. Uh, is there a favorite cut that you guys have for your cigar or for cigars in general, or is it different for every cigar? I you? usually only perfect cut. I actually use the Benchmade knife. Um, this guy. Um, however, when it comes to Remy's, like I'm smoking now, I do V cut with the Calibri V cut. Generally, bellicosos, torpedoes, I I like the V cut, but everything else gets the perfect cut. I use a Calibri V cut. You use a V or a deep V? Well, I have both, but I also have this um, one side's a V and the other side's a straight cut in case I decide I want to do a straight cut. Every now and then I'll do a straight cut. I just get a hair and I'll do a straight cut. But I just ninety nine. 90% of the time, I'm doing a V cut. What about you, Ben? I actually, I'm a fan of the punch, actually. And that's one thing where it's hard to get a high quality punch. Usually, it's either, you know, especially with Calibri, they have those little gadgets at the end of the yeah. lighter that you use, or other ones. Yeah. Usually, the gauge is very small. And you can't go, you can't, ah, there might be a couple options, but you can't like go shopping online even and look for a nice high quality punch because they're all five to 20 bucks or so. And they're all, I mean, they get lost easily. And actually I'm just, I just use, I just got a gift in the mail. They sent me a care package with some uh, office supplies and he included this. So I actually just got a very nice high end uh, punch that I use and actually works very well with the, uh, with the uh, Toro, and yeah, I just like it because it's it's cleaner, you know. There's sure. No, you have to be really in tune with your pace, though. So you have to be really in tune with your pace when you're smoking, um, when you use a punch. And generally, what I have found, because um, you're right, uh, most of them are throwaways. Um, they become really dull really quickly, um, and so that causes issues. But the pace thing, because you'll because you're you're creating a, a small pathway for the smoke, right? So if you smoke too fast or you draw too hard consistently, you'll develop tar buildup with the punch. Um, but yeah, that's when it works, it works perfect. That's why I mentioned the gauge, because yeah. most of them are tiny, and especially yeah. they, they won't fit on a on a small on a small lighter, because usually that will be that's like the gadget, you know. And this one is pretty. I I would say it's probably about <clears throat> uh, what would you say about half an inch, maybe even maybe close, maybe. Uh, no a quarter. I don't know. I don't know. I, I must have dropped that so, in the box on accident. So, I didn't mean to send you here, anything. I'll show you. Look how oh, big nice. of a. Of a yeah, cut. that is. So it's that's pretty a, good. That's perfect. Yeah. Would probably be even better on the robusto. Make it really big. Yeah, that's nice. It's just like removing the cap. That's good. That is really good. I've never seen. That's to tell me what you, what you're using there, Ben. I have to figure that out. That's that's pretty good. I will. I'll tell you. And, uh, I'll tell you. We'll, we'll tell you in the herb. So, <laughs> uh, just a reminder, guys. We're gonna we're gonna shut down questions soon. We're giving away some prizes for the best best question asked. So make sure to get your questions in soon. While I I do this little commercial, um, remember if you buy any five stolen throne cigars, you're gonna get one of their pre-release habanos, absolutely free. That cigar isn't gonna be released till 2021. Correct. That is correct. Correct. And then if you buy any 10 Stolen Throne cigars, you're going to get three sticks from the guys over at Stolen Throne. You're going to get one Habano pre-release, one Sumatra Call to Arms pre-release, and one of Lee's Personal Reserve, the Remy Jean, which is what he's smoking right now. And um, all of that can be purchased at LuxuryCigarClub.com. Uh, it's all in stock. It's ready to ship. We will make sure you get all your goodies with that. So if they're, you know, get your questions going. Um, if you have any more questions, we do have a couple more that came through. Tony asks, will you ever take on making a Lancero with all the struggles of finding enough wrapper to produce a full rollout? Um, yeah, absolutely. Um, so I don't know how familiar everyone is with Noel Rojas, but he prides himself on the smaller ring gauges. Um, he just came back out with the Rojas line um, and he's doing all small ring gauges. Lanceros, uh, the classic Coronas, that kind of stuff. So he is the right guy to work with. Absolutely, we consider it. Um, 
we we've we've thought about some special projects uh maybe a crook lancero maybe uh we'll see we'll see um jr saves me from myself he shuts me down a lot of times we try to do more but we're so damn busy as it is but absolutely that's a good question tony we we absolutely would consider it for sure I mean, if you if you know anything about Luxury Cigar Club, we're Lancero lovers over here. Um, <laughs> then y'all need to hook up with Noel Rojas and get the old uh, okay. KSG and statements in there. Let's do it. I'm behind and you 100, percent Tony. There you go. And Let's one more question from Chris: In your business plan, could you compare it to any other ventures you've been in? Um, that's a good. These are really good questions, man. Uh, we're gonna have a hard time picking some winners. Um, I, I think we've definitely taken bits and pieces, right? So I come from the consultant analyst side um, and legal compliance, so that's definitely helped with FDA and stuff. And Jr. has literally written the book on supply chain management, so those have definitely come into play with what we're doing. Um, me getting my MBA definitely helped. We 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 kind of pulled some of that in for what we're working with. I definitely think that our backgrounds and our, our foundation has played a huge role in what we're doing. Um, a lot of it is the customer service. I mean, Ben, you can, anytime there's a text or call, it comes to me or JR directly. There's no reps, there's no middleman. Like you're dealing with us directly every single time. Um, and that's true, right, Ben? That is absolutely true, 100%. I sent you a um, text, then you're like, ah, oh, this, this dude again. <laughs> like, what now? What do you need, Ben? <laughs> never, never. <laughs> yeah, that's a, that's a great question. I, I definitely feel like we were better um, prepared, I guess. I wouldn't say we were fully prepared because this is a monster. But um, it, it definitely, our past has definitely played into what we're doing now, especially JR's logistics and supply chain expertise for sure. Yeah, and of course, customer service, that's a, that's something that, I mean, everybody understands it, eh, but it's, it's a little hard to implement the, the, the idea that we are in business to make our customers happy. That's, what, that's our only claim to, to, you know, for existence, really. What are we doing? We're providing cigars or, or you're, you know, creating something beautiful, but you, you, the point is making your customers happy no matter what. And that's that's kind of easy once you understand that's what you're doing. You're not making cigars and then people are bothering you to buy them. Some companies have that philosophy and I think most of them don't will make it uh, for, the, for the long haul. But you know, No, I, I think that's right. I think that's right because I, I think the hardest part about that is the consistency. It's all well and good with how you handle things and what you say you're going to do. But then when you have to do it day in and day out, you know, like for us, it's always been about the, the biggest response we get from retailers and partners is, wow, you, you guys actually do the things you say you're going to do. If you if you make an order today, it's shipping out today or first thing tomorrow, period, every single time. Um, the same thing with, you know, like you said, with customer service, every single time we handle things every single time because the first time that you don't you're not doing what you say you're going to do well, now there's always happens. extenuating circumstances it does happen but you the it should be a relatively small amount because at the end of the day stolen throne we need you guys you don't need us it's an elastic product if stolen throne disappears tomorrow you'd find something else to sm smoke or sell uh what kind of dog you got there is that a sharp pay ben it is a sharp pay this is gordon it's gordon Gordon Nicely Shumway, done. Like I got my boy over here. I got Brody. We got a Connie Corso. My wife I think, and I rescued. I, had I think I'm. Food. I think I'm paraphrasing Lee, but said we just own a process and an operation. It's the customers that own the product. They're the ones who buy them and smoke them. They're the ones that own them. Right. No, I love it. Uh, Sam has a good question. Sam Skaggs, which of the three bonus sticks is your favorite? Oh, Sam, come on, man. That's hard. Uh, I'm, of course, partial to the Remy Jean uh, because it means so much to me. Um, if I had to choose outside of the Remy Jean, I, oh, I can't do it. The Remy Jean. 
<laughs> what about you, JR? Depends on what time of day it is. See, I have a limited number of Sumatras and Habanos that I can smoke. I have right now, well, I have a limited number of uh, Crooks, too, because we have those shipments that didn't come in yet. I, I, I just love the, the Crook right now, but the Habanos and Sumatras are unbelievable. It, it's You're like trying to pick one of your children. Which one do you love the most? No, oh, I mean, we have, a, we have a saying, right, in the industry, your favorite cigar is the one you're smoking right now. So. Yeah, absolutely. Right. I have been, I will tell hope. you, I've been smoking a shit ton of the Corona Sumatras, though. Uh, I have. I have more than Crooks and more than Remy's. I've been smoking a lot of the Sumatra Coronas. Okay, good. And then the last question we're going to take is from Larry, and he says, is the packaging a nod to Edgar Allan Poe? It, do, it does look Edgar Allan Poe-ish. That's you know, the way to say it, Chris. Poe? I, I said it right. Uh, Poe-ish, yeah. poe <laughs> I didn't really think of it that way, but I guess so, Larry. Uh, another, um, Larry is killing it with the Baltimore questions, guys. I'm going to tell you this. You guys got to work really hard. Uh, Larry's doing a great job. Uh, we didn't really. I didn't really consider that, but you're right, I Larry. I don't think Poe came up in any of our discussions. But it is. It is a. It has a, that feel to it for sure. Well, Ben, I'm gonna give one more commercial, and then I'm gonna let Do you it. close us down. Um, again, guys, a few more minutes of this is available. If you purchase any five stolen throne cigars, you're gonna get one of the pre-release habanos for free. If you buy any 10 of the Stolen Throne Crook of the Crowns, you're going to get three sticks for free. You're going to get one Habano pre-release, one Sumatra Call to Arms pre-release, which Lee's smoking a lot of right now, and one of Lee's personal reserve, which he reserves for his family and friends, like you said. So that means you're all his friend. That's really good. You can purchase everything at LuxuryCigarClub.com. That deal is only good during the cut and light, and it's worth every single penny. You're going to smoke through them fast. You're going to try to buy them again. And we're going to be happy to sell them to you. Um, I just want to say thank you, Jr. and Lee, for, for joining us tonight. Ben, I'm going to let you close us up. Yeah, that's it. Thank you guys so much for coming and giving us a, a little peek into... I think I'm frozen, but if you guys can still hear me, just let me know. We yeah. can hear you. I'm actually... <laughs> okay. Hey. <laughs> So that's it. We hope to join you, it, it, that you join us for the Herf. I'm going to text you the the link to come and say hi to, to a couple of, the, of our members there. And Absolutely. And we're looking forward to, to having you here again uh, sometime soon. And definitely, definitely looking forward to your uh, next release that everybody that purchased something today. I'm sorry, it looks so creepy the way <laughs> my <laughs> face looks. Uh, so that everybody that purchased today will get a chance to, to, to taste. Everybody that got a 10-pack will get a chance to taste your, your next coming release and the one coming next year. So we're very, very excited about it for sure. And that's Absolutely, it. man. Anything Thanks in? so much for having us. Yes, thank you. It's our pleasure to be here. Thank you. Thank you, guys. And we're going to get this Cheers. ended.